Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. Back in March, basically as soon as I started my channel, they announced this Project Titan, which is a collaborative art jam, including over 4,000 people and companies, and they gave 10 weeks to contribute to the game, which is supposed to consist of a 64 kilometer wide landscape using effects like PCG, gameplay ability system, and their best optimization methods provided by Unreal. And today, they actually announced that the Project Titan sample is now available to download. So you can go ahead and download this. It is a huge file. It's about 80 gigabytes. And yeah, I'm just going to get into it and explore. But in order for you to download it, just head over to fabs.com, search for Project Titan. It's probably the first thing they're going to be showing off. And you can just see from the images, there are a ton and ton of things that we can go ahead and check out. So on the right here, you'll see this view in my library. You can hit download and over in your Unreal Engine library. Just search for Project Titan. If you don't see it, go ahead and hit this refresh button next to the fab library and go ahead and create this project. It does say cache size is 81 gigs. It is a huge project. So if you don't want to download it, feel free to tune in and just watch uh, what I do. So as soon as you launch the project, it'll say welcome. So as soon as you launch the project, it'll say welcome to Project Titan. Uh, you can find the map in over here, so on. So this Titan main is the project file. And while opening the map, you will see the HLOD in preview. To view an area of the map, just select load selected regions. And I'm going to let you know there are a ton of textures, a ton of PCG stuff that's going to be loaded the first time you open it. Um, you'll probably, I just, as soon as I opened it, I just loaded everything slowly and uh, walked away from my computer for a couple hours. And I do have a 4090 Ti, so it is a very big project. But let me load this up and let's get into it. All right, so I finally got to load into my project and I'm started off here with this red orc goblin looking character and you can see on the bottom right i have my controls so i can go ahead and jump and while i'm in air i can go ahead and glide i also have a walk that i ride on which is gonna slant me down that hill i can right click to aim and I have a grapple i can hit tab so let me go over that real quick i can hit tab and it's going to show you the world map this is a really extremely large map this is an extremely large map it's 64 kilometers you'll see the regions in the editor divided up eight by eight. Um, yeah, it's absolutely big. So it will probably take you a while to go ahead and upload everything or load all your textures and so on. It's made with PCG practices and gameplay ability system. So it is very optimized, but of course in the editor, it's not gonna be as optimized as if it's a build. So this is just the map section and you can kind of see how the menus work on the top. There's a photo album, which we have a photo mode if we click one options i can show the hud action bar and this is just the instructions on the bottom right i'm going to leave this checked credits it's going to scroll down and thanking everyone who participated in the challenge and a huge thanks to amazon and perforce and then with customization we have these characters so we can go ahead and right click to select the full collection so for example this is a standard if i right click on amanti or amanita amanita if i right click on amanita it's going to be this mushroom character reverse is this uh this thing Old Miner is this guy with a walk on his head. Sulfur is going to be this character. Teddy Lot, Raven Feather, Arisa, Adventure, Bird Folk, Volcano Snail, Clown, Courier, and Gloom. And of course, you can go ahead and just change these one at a time if you want to, just by selecting this modular pack, or just by selecting these modular assets that just attach to the character, the main character rig. So I'll go ahead and choose the Wide Glider. Actually, you know what, I will choose the Amanita. And then I think for the body, I'll go ahead and choose the bird stuff. And this looks pretty good to me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and escape out of this. I'm not gonna click escape on my keyboard because that will just cancel me out. But instead you can see that the character changes. There's also an HP bar and a stamina system on the top left. So when I hold shift to sprint, you can see the stamina going down. When I let go, stamina regenerates. And now let's go ahead and actually explore this. So it's a really, really big world gonna go ahead and nice gonna go ahead and use my walk to get down and there are no swimming animations which i tried but it will just put you on this walk and if i were to go ahead and jump i can go ahead and glide and yeah overall all the assets that's been added into this look really amazing it feels like a stylized mmo except i'm the only one in this mmo and now you'll see i'm by the first house if i go ahead and right click you'll see this grapple thing come out i can just go ahead and left click it's gonna shoot me forward and if I grab the wall, it'll actually have me just hover onto it. So you can see my character has an animation offset so that when I look left and right, my character is facing in that direction. And I'm just kind of grabbing the wall here. 
And now let's actually exit the project and see the entire overview. So you're going to see that right now, none of my regions are loaded, but I can see it. So you're going to see the H lot is going to be very low. When I go towards it, it's going to disappear like so. There's some water on the ground. Everything looks really uh, low quality. This is just for optimization purposes and good practices. And you'll see that things will disappear as my camera gets anywhere near it. So there's this huge volcano and this Loki looks kind of good though, actually. And then there's this like air, airborne town and you can kind of tell from the textures that it's not fully loaded. But if I go ahead and just hit F11, go to windows and open up my, my world partition editor, like so, then I can go ahead over here and you'll see that when I move around, you see this kind of arrow thing flying around down here. And that is where my camera is and where it's looking. So I can just go ahead and select four. In their presentation, they said it's recommended to only load four at a time. And I can right click. I'm actually just gonna do one. And I'll just right click and load the selected region. And now it's gonna probably take a bit of time. I have a 4090 Ti, so this is a, a very hefty project to load. You don't wanna load everything. I've heard people trying to load everything at once. It crashes and yeah, not not the most fun thing to go through. But you'll see now that I've loaded it, you'll see a ton of assets kind of appear out of the blue and it looks a lot better. There's much better quality. So kind of like this dragon scale thing, I've actually never noticed this. Every single time I open this project and go through it, there's a lot of new things and this looks really, really nice. I'm actually curious to see what is, oh, it's a snake, okay. This is actually sick. I've never, I've never seen it. I didn't know it went all the way around like this. That's actually super cool. And then there's a little house up here. Uh, this kind of reminds me of Fortnite. And I love all the stylized assets used in this. Feels really, really big. So let me actually show you what it looks like from here and what happens if I load this section. I'm gonna select these two, right click, load selected regions. And now you'll see these assets. Everything's gonna look a lot nicer. I'll be able to go close to it once it finishes loading. And there we go. It loaded all the environment and look at the huge difference it made. It looks way better. There's so many assets in this project that it's not ideal to load everything. I guess this is meant to be in the air. Oh yeah, it looks like a bridge. Although this, I'm not too sure what this is. Maybe something didn't load. But at the same time, it is a little hard to tell. Because the vines are coming down as if it's... Oh yeah, it's just dangling. I guess it's supposed to be like this. Man, I love these stylized trees. They look really, really nice. So now if I just go over here and I'll go ahead and hit play... I am lagging while kind of running through this. I'm guessing it's loading a couple shaders as I go near a different region. Yeah, when I hit play, um, we're all good to go. It's way smoother in play mode than just roaming around the editor, which is a little odd, but it's probably just some optimization with the character because as you can see, when I look into the distance, uh, a lot of stuff, actually the H lods make it look perfectly fine, but a lot of them are very low level detailed from very far away. And yeah, let's get back and actually look at some of the things they use for this project to optimize and use best practices. So if I were to go under blueprints, go to my character, I can open my BP Titan player spawn, which is also if you go under world settings, under game mode, you'll see the default pawn class. It's this BP Titan player pawn. I'll double click to open this up and it is a lot of blueprints going on. You'll see they left a lot of tabs for us to see. It's using mover 2.0. So as you can see over here, there's the character motion component, which is the mover component, and they have a network prediction. And in the viewport, you'll kind of see all the stuff in here. So for example, we have this torso mesh, the glider up here, the walk, which is on the back of this character being covered by the camera, and the gravel hook, which is this part over here. So you'll see the invalid color is red and the valid color is green, basically when we're able to use it. And then the legs are separated from the headwear, from the head and so on. And then you can also change your default visualizer loading range. Uh, you can set it to closer if you wanna help your own optimization when going through this. If you're lagging a lot, just set this to a lower number as opposed to 10,000. And this is using gameplay ability system. I might've mentioned this before, and you can go ahead and see the ability system component is actually inside the character blueprint. And in order to see more about the gas that they're using, the gameplay ability system that they're using in the project, you'll just head over to Engine, Plugins, Gameplay Abilities, C++ Classes, Gameplay Abilities, and Public. And they have a ton of classes already here. And you can see their gameplay abilities. It's all coded in C++. So for example, they have the ability to for the character to jump. 
ability montage, target actor, target placement, ground trace. And yeah, the Titan project has a ton and ton of blueprints and so on that you can go through and learn from. And they even have a Project Titan mini tutorial series on their website. I'll link this in the description below. Basically, they have this YouTube video of the overview of the project. And then they also have tons and tons of mini tutorials. So it's also stuff like how to build an asset in Titan, using parent materials, landscape layer functions, block out meshes, learning PCG, like cliff faces and so on, collisions, and a ton more. I highly recommend going through this if you're interested in learning. And yeah, thanks for watching Code of the Road. Like, subscribe, comment what you want to see next. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.